Good morning, everyone. I'm Don Infante, and I'm the president of the Regency Oaks Resident Organization. And we're here for our weekly update with Brant and all the directors. But first, did you see that parade Wednesday afternoon? Boy, was that great. Wonderful parade. If you have missed it, there's a link around that you can get, okay, for ABC News did a great job for us. And I want to thank Ricky and the staff and everybody who, in fact, made it, made it so great. So we're here today to have your weekly update. The only thing missing, of course, is you. But if you have questions, we'll be able to get you answers. So don't be afraid to ask any board member or any, or any staff member. And with that, I'm going to close it out and turn it over to Brad. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our uh, weekly forum. We're glad you were able to join us. We're going to start directly at the uh, map here this morning. You can see the total cases in the state of Florida are at 60,000. Um, and our hospitalizations are 10,652 with 2,600 deaths. I want to focus in on the two graphs uh, over here on the, the right hand side. The top one in the yellow graph is the number of new cases per resident day. And if you look at that trend from uh, way back uh, early to uh, mid-May, it really has uh, started to trend upward. You can see uh, there at 6-1 there were a couple of days where uh, there were more than a thousand new cases per day. That trend has continued. Uh, Wednesday, we had almost 1,300 new cases, and this morning, we're reporting over 1,500 new cases. So, uh, it looks as if, uh, even though the governor has moved to phase two, the number of new cases has spiked and is trending upward at a pretty alarming rate. If you look at the second chart, if you look at the second chart, the uh, chart on the bottom right in white, that is the number of deaths uh, by date. Uh, and you can see since the 1st of May that that trend line is uh, pretty clearly declining. Uh, and uh, we are now down below uh, a 3% fatality rate throughout uh, Pinellas County and we're very close to that throughout the state. Testing continues uh, across the state of Florida but it is a slow process. Uh, we have tested uh, here uh, so far 47,428 folks um, which uh, a result, a positive result of about 2.9. Our hospital rate uh, in Pinellas County is 419 residents and in our specific zip code, it's up to 27. So we continue to uh, monitor and track this and we'll uh, report on, on these numbers uh, as they change. We also today are ready to announce the uh, additional rollout of further restrictions. Uh, as you know, today is the day that Governor DeSantis has moved the state of Florida to phase two. Uh, and we will begin to open up uh, uh, the state of Florida to a greater degree. We're following suit, and so Monday, effective uh, next Monday, which is the 8th of June, uh, we have restrictions that we will be removing as well, and we're going to be announcing those today as we go around and do the individual department reports. I'd like you to remember that uh, Regency Oaks, because of its vulnerable population and the fact that we serve a really at-risk population, uh, we were the first to implement restrictions and we will be the last to remove restrictions. Our primary overriding goal in making all of these decisions is to protect residents, prevent the spread of COVID, uh, and to make sure that you are in a secure and safe environment. So I'm going to go uh, to the administrative reports. We're going to start with uh, Sherry. Sherry. Brand, and good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Today, my report revolves 
around our April financial statements. Our total revenue for the campus in April was under budget by $193,000. We had one entrance fee sale on a budget of three. Our occupancy in the independent living is 93.2%. Our assisted living is at 90.4%. And our skilled nursing is at 68%. Campus-wide, we are at 90%. In regards to our expenses, our total compensation expense, wages and benefits in April was under budget by 57,000. Our non-wage expenses, these were over budget due to supplies purchased for COVID-19 and IT expenses due to transition. We do continue to have our weekly departmental meetings on revenue and expense control. Due to timing of some of our accounting entries, uh, we are uh, posting some corrections to our NOI. It will be under budget. I'll be able to report more specifically ne next month on that. And um, as our community incurs revenue losses and increases due to expense, expenses due to the COVID virus, we expect this to occur for the next several months. Thank you. Over to Rance Macy, our healthcare administrator. Good morning, I'm Rance Macy. I'm the healthcare administrator at the health center next door. A um, couple updates this morning. We are still waiting for our mandated test kits to come from the state of Florida on the Department of Health. Um, they're scheduled to be here by tomorrow, um, but I've heard there's been a delay, so they might not be here tomorrow. When we get the test kits, uh, all the staff in the health center and all Consenting residents will be tested for COVID-19, so we'll have a true baseline of where we're at. I'm optimistic that we won't have any of many of any cases. Um, secondly, on June 18th, um, there's going to be a blood drive that um, it's been set up, and it's going to be the blood mobile is going to be on the kind of the driveway towards the health center on the backside of campus. Um, when they're here, they're, they're coming around noon that day, and they'll be here for about five or six hours, and they're going to, um, obviously they want blood donations, but they're gonna test everybody's blood for antibodies to see if anybody had COVID-19. So it's a good way to find out in case you're interested if you had COVID-19. Thank you. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Lauren. Hi, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the parade yesterday. I'm Wednesday, I'm sorry. We certainly had a good time parading through the campus and waving and saying hi to everybody. Um, in administration, we continue to be taking temperatures and monitoring the temp log of everyone, the residents and associates as they enter the building. Um, we will be getting the emergency information forms into the resident boxes uh, next week. If you can complete those, turn them into the desk. That's basically if you will need assistance um, and what type of assistance should the need arise to evacuate or for you to leave your apartment. I've gotten some questions about whether or not we're going to pursue doing the resident photo directory and the answer is yes, we are. Um, not knowing when we're going to be able to open our community, it's been difficult to schedule that, uh, but it is on the plan and it will be published. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Ricky. From Beverage, just a couple updates. Uh, we had a great Mother's Day for um, continuing our hiring of servers. And um, Michael will continue to do the wine, beer, and soda deliveries. And also some good news starting on Monday through Saturday from 11 to 1. Uh, you can go to the tavern for a grab-and-go lunch. Uh, there's no sign-up and there's no deliveries. And we'd like for you to come in one way and leave another way. And we'll have the floor marked as we do in the breezeway. Please keep your social distancing. Thanks and have a great day. In addition to the tavern opening, we will still continue our deliveries from the North and South Dining Room and the Breezeway will also remain open. Turn it over to Darwin. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Darwin Perez with Plan Operations Director. Um, this month, uh, last month's accomplishments in our department, um, we did finish pressure washing the South Building. We uh, work on repairing the marketing center uh, around the out exterior. Uh, we did work on the Sylvan uh, HBAC split system, getting it um, uh, update, and um, and we did some work on some office. We renovated and made them uh, look better. 
So thank you. So the order of Amy. Good morning, Amy Wa, Director of Marketing. For May, we had three financial closings. A107 for Linda Lindsay, M505 for Pat Geisheimer, and S202 for Mr. and Mrs. Svensson. We also had a physical move-in last month, R303 Ruth Myers. We'd like to thank all of you that have given us names of resident referrals of someone you think might be interested in Regency Oaks. Those are the best type of referrals that we like to get. And there is a bonus for anyone that you refer to us that moves in. I'd like to congratulate Harry and Mrs. Coble and Emily Bryan for their recent referrals of people who have joined our community and they've received bonuses for that. Thank you. And now I'd like to turn it over to Sandra. Good morning. I'm Sandra Novotko, the Human Resources Director. During the month of May, we celebrated Senior Living Week as well as Nurses Week with our staff by providing a Disney theme, um, food and games and music um, in the breezeway. We also rolled out a new training portal for associates. And we've also started the transition process with Innovative Home Services, who officially became a part of us this past Sunday. Now over to Tiffany. Good morning, Regent C. Oaks, and happy Friday. In the month of May, um, programs assisted the marketing team with their company-wide video submission. Congratulations to marketing. As well as we assisted the HR team to plan and orchestrate Senior Living Week 2020. We added a Monday evening series in place of the Monday night bingo during social distancing. I hope everyone's enjoying. As well as we create a safe way to enjoy entertainment on Memorial Day with Steve Walker in the breezeway. We opened back up the gym with social distancing during phase one. Thank you, Zelko, for all your help. And we're hoping you still are enjoying our midday matinees on the TV. Thank you and have a great weekend. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to add in um, the changes that will take place next week in programs. As you saw in your mailboxes as well as the TV, that we will have our BFIT classes as well as BFIT with Zelko and Peggy next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Zoko will be Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays in the Grand Lobby South. Hosting the classes up to 15, you must sign up at the front desk. The class times will be 9.15 and 1.15. Peggy's classes will also take place in Grand Lobby South on Mondays and Fridays. Same time, same place, 9.15 and 1.15 p.m. in Grand Lobby South. We're also reintroducing our small group setting of bridge, um, charades, things of that nature. We're working through those aspects right now, but we are happy to reintroduce that to the community. We're still continuing to ask everyone to please social distance, but we wanna make sure to add those things in slowly, so please keep an eye out for that. Thank you. And I'm gonna pass it over to Leslie. For May's accomplishments for resident services, we still had our Good Grief support group with Millie Diaz with our two residents. We had our monthly sharps and prescription disposal clinic. We are still screening temperatures for residents, visitors, and employees, maintaining the quarantine list and temperature checks, as well as on the COVID-19 task force. For the numbers for today on quarantine, for our independent living, we do have 11 on quarantine. Nine of them are non-COVID related hospital stays. Two of them are our two new move-ins. For our skilled nursing, we have seven for non-COVID related hospital stay. We have two on isolation in our assisted living. They had exposure to COVID, but they're asymptomatic, so we're just watching them. And we have uh, currently zero staff members being quarantined. Anyone showing any symptoms is zero residents and zero staff. We are currently doing no testing for residents or staff at this time. And for COVID related, we still have the one that tested positive in the past and zero staff members that have tested positive. Thank you. All right, that concludes our administrative reports and uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Don? Thank you, Brad. All the residents are in fact, are in fact most appreciative of the fact that we're opening up and that we're loosening up and we're beginning to come back to some quote, normal operations. But they still have some questions as to, well, we're lagging by about two weeks. What does it look like? for the future. When do we think we'll be coming back to normal? 
All right, thank you, Dawn. Um, this is going to be a slow process, and I am so appreciative of everyone's patience. Uh, I understand how frustrating uh, this must be. We've been dealing with this since uh, uh, March, and uh, it looks like it's never going to end. And so uh, it's, it's difficult every day to, to have to continue this way. Unfortunately, uh, there's not immediate relief in sight. Um, you're looking at the numbers. We're seeing a spike here in Pinellas County across the state. Uh, the governor has decided to continue moving forward, as will we, uh, but we're going to do so with a very measured, tempered uh, approach to this. And we are still several weeks away from even being able to consider having an open dining experience. Uh, we are still several weeks away from even being able to consider having work orders done by maintenance or having housekeeping uh, coming into the apartments for, for modified or uh, more extensive service. Uh, typically, we run about a week behind uh, the, the governor or the state of Florida who has just today gone to phase two. Uh, we next week, uh, just in keeping with uh, our, our procedure and according to our uh, thinking on this, uh, as the governor went to his phase two, we're going to our second phase of phase one. We're following the exact same approach and timetables uh, that have been laid out by the state of Florida. So Monday, as we go with our second phase of our phase one approach, um, we, will, we will continue to, uh, to move forward. I don't know how long the governor is going to be in phase two. Uh, if it's uh, any indication, he was in phase one for 30 days. Uh, he uh, opened up phase one back on May 1st. He broke it down into two components, uh, a phase one mini and a phase one follow on action. We've followed that precedent and that's the way we're approaching it. So I would say that we would look at uh, phase one somewhere around the 15th of the month, add seven days because we follow seven days behind the state of Florida that would put us into the 21st, 22nd of June before we would be able to uh, enter into our phase two uh, and it will be a mini phase two. We're taking baby steps, we're going slow, we're being cautious, we're gonna make sure that residents are protected. Well, the second question that I keep getting has to do with dining services. People, people miss, miss our great, our great dining rooms. The dining experience in the evening is, is one of the highlights of the day for most of our, for most of our great residents. So they want to know when, when are we going to reopen? What does it look like for our dining area? What can, what can we expect in the next, the next couple of months? I was hoping Ricky could expand on that, please. To uh, answer your question, um, we're going to be still uh, moving at a slow pace to uh, follow all the guidelines, but we will continue to um, offer you uh, these different services as far as the, the tavern grab and go, the uh, delivery service, and the, um, the dining, well, the takeaway and the breezeway. And uh, that's it. Leslie, there's been a couple of questions about the protocol and wearing masks. Could you help us out here, please? Thank you for that question. So the CDC is recommending that everyone does wear a mask. We only require you to wear a mask if you are showing any symptoms of COVID-19, which you should be in your apartment if you are experiencing any symptoms. The primary reason for wearing a mask is to prevent the spread of COVID-19. If, if you are in need of a mask, please see me, Leslie Resident Services. I am located, so if you are in need of a mask, please come and see me in Norfolk 108, the outpatient gym, and I can provide you with a mask. One, 
final plug. That has to do with our great scholarship committee. We're giving out $62,000 plus this year. And uh, we can't have the residents in because of the COVID-19 issues. It's going to be on channel 732 at noon on next Monday. So I ask you to watch the scholarship awards on channel 732 and keep on giving to our scholarship fund. And, and I thank all of you who have, in fact, done such a great job of helping it grow. With that, Brent, I think we close this up, huh? Well, thank you all very much. <laughs>